YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with the Patriots preview. Some things to watch, players to watch, and much more. A team that I think most people believe will struggle this year. Uh, but if you take a look at the end of last season, after the bye week, <clears throat> they were they were somewhat competitive, actually. I mean, they, they lost most of those games, but if you look at those games, they, they were close, and mainly because their defense, and this is while having bad quarterback play. So you think the quarterback play has at least got to be a little bit better this year, and they've added to this team. So can they kind of be sneaky competitive? We'll break it down right here, right now. But um, playlist on the channel with the teams we have done in this series, as you see down here, only four teams left. We will get to them in the next few days, early next week, uh, and then moving on to more content. So if you join us, number three on the list for the Patriots, what to watch, what we're expecting, what we're questioning. Do they rush the process? The process in general, how this is like some sort of a rebuild. You know, of course, they're not stage one of the rebuild, I don't believe, but do they, and mainly with Drake May, do they rush this? Because I do think Drake May is better than Jacoby Brissett. Is he smarter than him? Of course not. Experienced quarterback of Jacoby Brissett. Got to be a, you know, a little more prepared, ready, smarter. But I, I think Drake May has more to his game even day one than Jacoby Brissett. He has, he's going to have more of that flashy ability. The, he may, throughout his career even maybe, is going to have some of that ability to make that big game-changing, game-winning player, multiple of those throughout the game. Or you know he could have the hero ball turnovers as well. That's going to be Drake May's game. Um, he's going to get better as time goes on, of course, but could have that Josh Allen, not as much uh, running ability, but is a little sneaky w with his legs, uh, but he could have that type of ability even from the start, but throughout his career. So therefore I think he has an opportunity to put them in a better position right away. He was my number one prospect coming out of the draft. So I was extremely high on Drake may, but it was more of an upside future take. He's still a little raw, but what he could become, but but kind of going back, I, I think they can be better with Drake May. But you look at the situation. It's The team is still a work in progress. And, man, I'm usually, if you get a really good elite prospect or close to an elite prospect really early, you pretty much play him. Expect, unless you have an, you know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, Jordan Love sitting behind Aaron Rodgers or Rodgers sitting behind Favre. Unless you have that situation, unless you had like Brady ahead of him and he was still on the Patriots, they don't. They don't have that situation. So usually I'm more of play that, play that guy, but... I do look at the situation. I look at the schedule. I look at the early part of this schedule. It is tough. I thought the Patriots had one of the toughest schedules last year, too. So I don't know what's going on with that, but it's just unfortunate, I guess, unlucky. But that beginning portion of the schedule is extremely tough. So you kind of get a raw prospect, throwing them in that situation, not the best offensive line. Should it, should improve, should be improved. Not the best receiver group, but it definitely should improve. We'll talk about more about the receiver group here in a second. It could be pretty decent, I guess, and May could actually elevate it. So it is a good question. Like, do you kind of sit them, uh, consider bringing them in at halfway point? Uh, you sit them for the whole year. Because he, he is that type of prospect where he just needs to learn and he needs to learn to just the, the NFL game and learn to relax and learn to throw the ball away at times. But there are so many eye popping things on tape and mainly great things on tape that I do think I, I think the Patriots found I think they have someone like they they were they were missing Brady for a little bit there. Is it going to be Tom Brady? Not saying that, but I'm a huge Drake May supporter. I I I think they 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 could be back. The Patriots could be back sometime in the future because of that. But that is a legit question. Do they rush this process? What do they do? We're waiting to see. And it's debatable. I can, deb Like I kind of just did, I can debate with myself on if they should put May in and go full go this year. Be and kind of circling back to what I said at the start of this video, like they were like, people don't realize that they were, it's hard to say they were competitive, but they in the... There were a lot of games, and they got their ass kicked in some games. The Cowboys-Saints game, those were early. They beat the Bills somewhere halfway in the season. Down the stretch after the bye week, they were really close in some of these games against some good teams, some winnable games. They were close the next time playing the Bills. They were close with the Chiefs. They were beating them for a bit, um, and mainly because their defense. And now you think they have a little more on offense, especially not just quarterback, but especially because quarterback. Um, you know, so that... You know, what's the mindset in there with that staff, the entire staff for an office? Like, hey, we can be competitive, so let's put – like, do they want to be competitive right now? Do they go all out right now because they believe they can be sneaky? 
or do they be patient? So it's interesting. It's very interesting to see what they can do here. Um, number two, I think the receiver group's a little sneaky. It is, you know, they don't have a star receiver, obviously, I mean, nowhere near a star receiver. But they are deep. The rotation seems to be pretty good, actually. And I'm curious about the rotation. How do they rotate these guys in? Uh, the only knock is, besides that they don't have anywhere near a star receiver, is that it feels like they have a bunch of slot receivers. Uh, but I, I think this group's led by you know probably Kendrick Bourne, who does, who can play inside and out. I, I do I do think he does his best work on the inside. Uh, Demario Douglas, kind of a shifty receiver, kind of took off last year as a rookie. Uh, you know, they brought in Juju Smith-Schuster, who was disappointing, but he's got talent in him. He can play. He may have a good good quarterback in Drake May out there, but he's another guy that has his best play from the slot. K.J. Osborne did some damage with the Vikings. I thought he kind of took a little bit of a step down this past year, but again, they brought in Jordan Addison. So two years ago, he looked like he was something They had something special and he was kind of just a return man when they drafted him. So he was actually a little ahead of schedule. I thought he's done most of his damage from the slot as well, but can play both. Uh, they draft Jalen Polk. He'll play the outside and they have a number of receivers, you know, Javon Baker's another draft pick number of receivers. And they're looking at other guys like Brandon Ayuk. So, um, this could be a sneaky group. It's, it's a bunch of guys that are pretty quick, pretty athletic. They get open and, for the most part, they catch the football, and they may have a better quarterback, whether it's May or Brissett, compared to last year. I mean, May can really sling it. He's going to hit those home run plays. Brissett's going to get the guys the ball if they're open. Um, so this group uh, is going to be better than you think. It's a little better than you think. I, I do think they're they're missing that legit outside, like, consistent receiver. I think that's why they're looking at Ayuk. Um, you know, some rumors about maybe they were interested in a guy like T. Higgins. Um you know, or possibly they could be in the future. Like that, that's the type of receiver they are. They feel they are missing. I would agree with that. Um, so, I mean, if they got one of those guys, like, this would be a really, really, really good receiver group. So just think about that. I know they don't have one of those guys, but I, I do think the rotation, the depth, the type of receivers they have a little underrated. So that's something to watch, especially with which quarterbacks they had. And number one, I kind of touched on it already, but it, it is number one for a reason here. I think everyone is doubting the Patriots this year, and that's fair. I mean, I'm, I'm not expecting a whole lot because I do th I do think they ultimately end up being a little patient, and I you know I still wonder about the offensive line and just consistency of this team. But I do think people forget things, and I think they underrate them a little bit. I keep going back at the end of last year, but I don't like basing too much off of previous years, but I also just look at this team on, like, do your evaluation. Look at this team on paper. What do you know about this team? It's a good defense. I don't think much changes from Belichick to Mayo. Mayo learned under him. He was with the team and he just, he just trusts him to have this defense playing at a high level or somewhat high level. But the entire defensive, like the roster in terms of the defensive side of the ball is good. Like I don't really view, I mean, you want Judon happy. You want him out there. So I guess that's something to monitor, but they're pretty good across the board. Barmore really broke out last year, and he's going to continue to take off. I mean, he can continue to climb up the board and maybe become an elite defensive tackle or close. Maybe that's a little strong, but it's possible. Um, guys like Keon White should be able to take off. You know, young players like that. Um, you know, I, I like I love the secondary. Remember, they get Christian Gonzalez back. I love the, the multiple players throughout the secondary. We'll talk about that more uh, in a second. But the defense, if you have a really good defense, I don't know if defense wins championships anymore. I mean, the Chiefs defense looked really good last year, so maybe they uh, you could say use them as the case. But they do have Patrick Mahomes. I think today's style, I, I do think it's. I mean, even when Brady was winning, and there's a lot of good defense, but Tom Brady and that offense were at the end. Most of those were winning. I know the Rams Super Bowl was def uh, a defensive game, but, um, you know, but so back to my point, I don't think defenses are winning Super Bowls anymore for the most part. It's still possible, but great defenses give you a chance that they, they, they can win football games and they keep you in games. So I think if you have a great defense, you're not going to get beat up by it. Like you're not going to get destroyed by anybody. And I think the teams that people put the Patriots, like the teams that the Patriots are like grouped with, tiered with, like some of those teams, you know, they just might get their ass beat here and there because they're just not that good of a roster. But the Patriots, because of defense alone, uh, they're in games. And then you factor out the offense got better. Look at an offense coordinator. You look at offensive line should be a little bit better. The receivers we talked about and a mainly quarterback play. 
Um, I mean, even the running game should be a little bit better, uh, possibly. So that makes you think, like, they might be pretty competitive. And, and, and I think the only thing keeping that from happening is if they... Because overall, people don't really view them as a competitive team last year. The quarterback play was really bad. So if the quarterback play, once again, is really bad, that's kind of what's stopping them. So I think they just need average, and they could have more than average quarterback play. They could be sneaky competitive. So that's kind of my main take on the Patriots there. Players to watch. I wanted to list, like, multiple players here, but I have to put the rookie on here. Unless they unless they trade for a Brandon Ayuk, that's going to really take snaps away from Polk. So I guess something to monitor, but... They they had to have Jalen Polk. He he went a little earlier than expected. Not that he wasn't deserving. Not that he's not a good player. But was a little surprised they targeted him for a Drake May offense. And um, well, you could make sense of it too because he's a really good contested catcher. He has some uh, production down the field. Uh, May can can whip it downfield. Throws the ball up for grabs sometimes. So it does make sense. But it felt like a guy they absolutely had to have. They had him higher than a lot of receivers that people thought were for sure higher than Polk. Um, so there's a little bit of pressure here too because the that roster is full of slot receivers in my opinion and Polk to me is an outside receiver. So a little pressure of coming in and being that guy if they don't add someone else and again, a guy that they had to have so they think a lot uh, you know, highly of him to be a, a pretty early impact of course. Um, but yeah, his game at Washington, like what was the best part of his game? Like the guy caught the ball. He was tough. He, he would go up and attack the ball at its highest point, can make contested catches. The guy caught the ball and had production, bottom line. Like those guys you expect to be productive right away. You don't need them to kind of sit and learn how to, you know, be involved. Like he doesn't, you know, could his route running be a little crisper? Sure, but the guy beat man coverage. He beat zone coverage. He caught the ball. So a little bit of pressure. He's got to come in be that outside receiver and he's got to catch the ball because that's what he did at Washington. If he doesn't come in and do that and he's non-existent, there's an issue now in long term for that. So a guy they had to have, he, you know, he better do something even as a rookie. There's actually, a, to me, it's a weird one because he's not like a top, top draft pick, but there's a little more expectations because of this, the situation like I just explained. So we put a rookie on this list. Number two, Christian Gonzalez. I had an elite grade as did a, a lot of people uh, a year ago. I was really hyped for him. I thought he was a sure thing, great corner, and he was sure looking like it. He was sure looking like it, and a perfect defense for him. He was on the path of for sure in the conversation for defensive rookie of the year. Could have won it. You could it, All assumption, but, it, but if he stuck it out the whole year, I think there's a decent chance he could have won that award. Um, so he's that good, but unfortunately gets injured. So how is he post injury? He's young. He can definitely recover for from it. But this is a guy that has elite potential. Like he can be an elite corner. The way corners are producing early on these days, a lot different than it used to be. It used to take time, almost like the quarterback position. Both those positions changed a little bit. But he can be an elite corner if he's healthy. Absolutely, I, I'd say if he's healthy, I will be. I'm gonna predict we will we will be calling him an elite corner in the next two three years, maybe before then. I, I think that highly of him. So it's a player to watch. Like people kind of forget about him because you know he disappeared halfway through the year earlier in that because he was injured, and then everyone's talking about Witherspoon, who was great, fantastic. Uh, for the Seahawks, so people kind of forget, and people talk about Banks as well, and uh, Joey Porter Jr., people forget about Christian Gonzalez somehow, you just don't hear his name brought up, so um, he's going to be really good as long as he's healthy, so how is he post-injury, I'm not really too worried about it. Number one, I bet you thought I was going to go Drake May. First, Drake May needs to be out there. Other guys I wanted to go with, Keon White have, having to step up and him kind of being versatile, like a physical edge rusher that can kind of you know, play that DN spot. It's just perfect for the Patriots. It's like a, such a perfect fit. And Marty Mapu is a guy that I really liked out of Sacramento State a year ago, uh, a linebacker safety hybrid. So I'm very curious to see uh, you know, how he is used. Some of the other receivers I could have put here, Drake May I could have put here if he plays. Um, Juju does, does he kind of get back on track? Uh, there's so many guys, uh, Jonathan Jones, I can put up here because he was such a top tier slot corner move to the outside. Not as good, but still pretty solid. Do they use him in different ways? Uh, the Patriots were like the poster team for this, this section of this series. Uh, but I want Kyle Duggar, huge Kyle Duggar fan. Um, I think he could be a, an elite safety. We talk about Gonzalez. I think the guy can be elite corner. I think Kyle Duggar has it in him to be an elite safety. Uh, I actually thought he would take more of a step last year, uh, even though he was a solid player. Two years ago, 
I was blown away by his play two seasons ago. That season, so not last year, not not last year, the, the, just the season before that. Uh, that season got me. Just just eye popping moments. The instincts were off the charts. We already know he's a freaky dude. He can get downhill, uh, you know, lay a hit, like make plays. But his instincts really were off the charts that year. That's something I don't think he really can coach. But maybe they got it out of him. He kind of gave me vibes of uh, that year of like Harrison Smith and his prime. Uh, you know, so I love that. So I thought he'd take a little bit more of a step this last year, but I, I think it's in him. And I think Mayo is going to kind of have his own his twist on, it's going to be Belichick's defense, but his kind of philosophy for today's style, like a younger style. And I, I think that can get a lot more out of Kyle Duggar, actually. It's a guy they had to have back, uh, you know, so it, 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 uh, it would make sense that it falls in line. So I think this is a guy that could be great or elite. So it's a, I'm a fan of his game. And I didn't think he's ahead of schedule either because I didn't think he was going to be – we didn't have much tape to go over with him when he was coming out. Uh, obviously, small school kid. Um, so he's ahead of schedule to me. So I, I think he's a lot of potential. So even though the Patriots, you know, they're not supposed to be that great, there's a lot of things, a lot of players that kind of get excited about about their future. It's a team of the future. Again, they're, they're going to bring this thing back around here, and that's good. Games to watch, how about the Bengals in week one? How about that? Anything can happen in week one. Random things happen. Upsets happen. There's a prime opportunity for an upset here in week one because the Patriots got better. Which quarterback they get to play? I guess that that plays a part. They've added they've added players. They might be a little bit of a tough game plan. Everybody's a tough game plan in week one, but because they've changed some things, they're even tougher of a game plan. And the Bengals, for whatever reason, even with this group, it's. You at first glance, it's like it's tough draw to play the Bengals Week One because it's a team that has durability issues. If you got them on your schedule later in the year, it's like all right, maybe we don't have to pull, play the full strength Bengals. Like unlucky Patriots, they got to play Joe Burrow, they got to play Jamar. All the guys are healthy, we think. But for whatever reason, the Bengals struggle early in the year. They struggle in Week One. I don't know what it is. They're they're bad in Week One. Like we've even seen Joe Burrow, who's like a, a top three quarterback in the NFL, look bad early in early in the year. So opportunity for the Patriots here to get one. And you know, there'll be the overreactions like always like, oh, the Bengals suck now in the Patriots. Maybe they're great. You know, it's just week one things. I like the bears in week 10, two teams that don't have a ton of hype. The bears are getting a little bit, but not a ton of hype, uh, but could, and are young, improving and could be a little sneaky. It's also Caleb Williams versus Drake may. I, I would predict Drake may's in by this time. If he's not starting every game or by week one. Um, so, the two top prospects on my board going against each other. And I like the Colts in week 13. Last year, at the end of the year, they played the Colts. It was an absolute defensive battle. Like the most defensive, one of the most defensive, bad, biggest defensive battles on the year. Patriots were in that game. The offense was just so bad. The quarterback play was just so bad. They just, they could not win it because of that. They kind of gifted the Colts. So kind of just seeing where these teams are at a year later in comparison could be pretty interesting. It, you know, it could be a low scoring defensive game once again. Uh, with maybe a little bit more offense from both sides. Uh, would like to see Drake May and Anthony Richardson both out there at that time. Some fans takes. Uh, answer not to, uh, new coaching staff. What changes? Uh, yeah, Mayo, like what, what does he bring his own philosophy on top of like what he's already learned under uh, Belichick? Some you know slight changes there. Uh, then Van Pelt in the offensive coordinator spot. Um, yeah, does he what does he bring over? So we'll yeah, curious to see the changes. Rookie class impact, how much will we see of May? Yeah, I had the same question. Deep room of average replacement level receivers. Who steps up? Yeah, that's kind of my point too. It's like a deep room, so that's good. And you got a bunch of guys that can play. But so who's the yeah, who's that guy that steps up? Who ends up being their best receiver? I think the safe bet is born if he's healthy. Man, I can see it being Polk. I could see it being because we you, you know Polk's gonna get those outside reps as long as they don't bring in someone else like the, He's the only like true outside receiver. Um, Douglas really looked better than expected last year. Osborne, I mean, if you go back to two years ago, he looked really, really solid, um, really solid, like an up and comer. So like he could be really, really good. Does Juju like in terms of the talent that's inside these guys? You say Juju, like what they're capable of. Like Juju's number one. So he's very, really curious. Demario Douglas, we talked about, could be that guy rejuvenated, healthy defense. 
Uh, yeah, that'll help. We know it's going to be a solid defense. Barmore continue to refine his game. Yeah, like I said, like the guy took a, in, an insane step up last year, and he was kind of a raw prospect that was already really good for Bama at the same time. So he has potential to be really, really good. You know, could we talk about talk about him being great or elite in the next year or two or three? Another one of those guys like Barmore, Duggar, Gonzalez, May, um, a when you, uh, you know, I just said Barmore, right? I said Barmore. Uh, the, these guys like they got crazy potential. Uh, and Gonzalez and Jones outside cornerback duo. It's a good duo. Jonathan Jones. Again, I wonder if they show some looks with him on the inside. I know they have some inside guys already there, but Jones can play. It's just a positive. Like they can mix things up there a little bit. Uh, and then Keon White, yeah, interesting player to watch because him coming out of Georgia Tech, it's like, is he an edge guy or is he like more of a 3-4 end? Well, the Patriots can use him in both spots. So, And he looked pretty good, looked pretty promising in his moments last year. So does he step up even more? Kicking, uh, brought Sly in. It's a good point. I forgot to mention the kicking. And then Ryland, was pretty, he was pretty bad last year but was a rookie. Does he turn it around? That's a good question because uh, – Yeah, they could have won more games if it wasn't for kicking, too. So, uh, interesting battle there. Cameron Sullivan, toughest stretch of games uh, is the start of the season. Yeah, I think I brought that up as well. It's a really good point. It's like, um, yeah, and he says, does unpredictability help them through it? Yeah, that's a good point as well. Like I talked about, they could sneak away with that Bengals game. So, you could debate, like, would you rather have the tougher games early because anything kind of goes based on history, not always, but... um, but it also can just dig them a hole where they're down and they kind of just it kind of loses they lose confidence and it kind of programs in their minds like hey we're a future team anyways um do they start Drake May and he plays these really tough teams some really tough defenses early and does that kind of hurt his his growth his progression so i think that's a tough i think it's i think it's a tough thing that it's so the schedule's so tough in the beginning may his best long term QB but how good is he year 1 how early do we see him yeah that's the big question I really don't know who's starting week one. I really, I, I think we see May this year, though. Um, it might already be. It, I think we could see him week one. We could see him not at all. We could, but I think there's a chance that they already determined that they're not gonna, they're not gonna play him against the tough teams early, and they already plan on bringing him in. Um, you know, unless Brissett's winning like crazy, it's, it's really up in the air. Um, Return of Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, we talked about that. Take Patriots end of the end of the year with number one overall pick. So that would be tough. Like I, if they had the number one overall pick and Drake May played all year, that wouldn't be the best look, I guess, for their future. Not that it says what their future is, but that would be tough. But if they just played Brissett all year and they got the number one pick, wouldn't be really any panic. Um, what would they do with that first overall pick? Because they are, they already should be strong on defense. There's a lot of good defensive guys. Oh, uh, they would go. Well, I just realized they would probably go Will Campbell, uh, tackle from LSU. We're getting ahead of ourselves here a little bit. I, I don't, as a team, I, they could be bad. They definitely could be bad, but I don't know if they get that first pick with the defense they have. I don't know if, I don't know if that happens, but we'll see. It's possible. Pat Svan here from B Dov. Uh, this defense is quietly a top five defense in the league, but was mauled by injuries last year, and they still kept them in games. Despite offense plays a part on defense, you know it definitely plays a part. Putting them on the field constantly, so they still played fairly well. Not every single game, obviously, but um, yeah, it's a sneaky, sneaky, really good defense. Drake May has a higher chance of starting Week One than people think. I, I think it's up in the air. I usually have a firm take. I, I I almost like I almost think they could they plan on putting May in and maybe not right away, but I, I think so highly of him he could look outstanding in the in the preseason process not just the preseason games and then they just like hey let's play him let's let's freaking go let's compete we saw what the Texans did last year let's do it you know I can definitely see that this team is going to win around six to eight games if healthy nine plus if May is good immediately if May is good if May is good immediately. I yeah, it's actually very possible, very possible because the rest of the team is pretty good. If May is like already, you know, confident, not too sloppy, good. Because I'm as high on him as anyone, and I think he's going to be sloppy early on, and that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, they're going to win some football games then. Uh, Adam, when will Drake May start? And yeah, will he prove the haters wrong? And there's some people that are really low on May. There were some random people. Um, 
I think if he gets the opportunity, he's definitely going to prove I think we're going to go, okay, this guy's got some talent to him. Yeah, he's made tur- turned the ball over, uh, but he's got some. He's got it in him. Sneaky good receiver core, and we talked about that, almost exact words. Uh, big fan of Douglas, Baker. Yeah, I forgot about Baker, too. Javon Baker, I mean, another guy that gets open, catches the ball, was a little inconsistent. I, sometimes I think he did a little bit, tried to do a little bit too much with his routes. Um, he was an Alabama guy originally, so... Jerry Judy, I kind of thought like, you know, obviously Judy is much better prospect than Baker, but I thought he kind of did a little too much sometimes with his routes, like a little bit too much with the head fakes and the, and the movement. Um, sometimes he kind of tried to be that guy that he really wasn't, uh, but he did have some good routes. Uh, defensively is very, uh, defense is very underrated. Very excited to see the continued development of Keon White, especially Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, we talked about that. A really good stuff. Take Patriots finish is one of the worst teams in football. Patriots keep Brissett starting for too long, but when he eventually uh, starts, May has many good flashes, but has some struggles. Defense finishes top ten. Gonzalez becomes a cornerback player of the year, a comeback player of the year candidate. So yeah, I like those takes. They're pretty. I think pretty real realistic said jose do you think the patriots could win seven games or more this upcoming season yeah, we kind of touched on it. i definitely think the defense alone like if the offense is complete trash all year like it was last year i think the defense alone because it's how good it is and how the games they kept them in last year and now it's healthier they alone could win some games maybe not by themselves seven but close to that and the factor on the offense should be better um they, they most definitely can win that many games schedule's tough though that's that was a tough thing um Dylan uh, Warner may may will be the catalyst for the return of the Patriots offense to being top 15 with a top 10 defense. They will be in all their games and will make the playoffs. So a little bold, but I do like, yeah, may is the guy like he's, I, I believe I'm fully on board with that. Like he could struggle this year. He could be borderline bad this year, honestly. And I will still believe that it's just, you know, just, Going to trust the the prospect evaluation, which is a long-term evaluation for him. And I, I don't think it's going to be super long until we see that. I think we can see it right away, uh, the talent. Um, but, yeah, some bold things. But I do like, yeah, they, they'll be in all their games. I do believe that. I do, like I believe that fully. That was kind of my main thing with it. The, like, they'll be competitive. Uh, Watson, Tron, uh, how much should this offense resemble the offense Van Pelt ran in Cleveland? That's a really good question. That is a really, really good question. Something I didn't really talk about. We mentioned Van Pelt a little bit, maybe. I can't remember. Uh, really good question because new offense coordinator, so it's always a question. How do they change things? How did, How is he with the new quarterback? He, He's a quarterback background. He played the position. Um, so him kind of picking Drake May, wanting to work with him, that's fantastic. Uh, but why is a really good question and one that I have a prediction for maybe, but we don't have a full knowing answer is going back to Van Pelt with the Browns. He was with the Browns for quite a few years here, or a few years. Uh, last year, the Browns changed a little bit. They changed the blocking. They tweaked the blocking scheme a little bit. I think it was kind of gearing towards more of a Watson offense uh, in just a different style in general before that. And they kind of, it almost felt like they, they kind of geared towards that the year before. But before all that, they were like a strict outside zone, um, West Coast style offense, zone blocking scheme, you know, outside zone, a lot of pulling outside, the blockers getting downfield, and then running backs trying to hit home runs. And then maybe down the stretch of two seasons ago, kind of preparing for Deshaun Watson era. And then last year, we saw a lot, a lot of differences, a lot of just you know man blocking, gap scheme, like north and south play for them. Um, so which scheme are we gonna get? And it's funny because the Patriots were always yeah in you know their their glory years inside zone, um, yeah a lot of man runs and blocking scheme. They really weren't an outside zone team at all, which a lot of teams are running. They were straight physical north and south. Uh, type scheme and, and then they tried to a couple years ago with with um you know that whole uh, I guess trial and error thing they were they were testing different things out they were trying to gear more towards outside zone and they were like during the year they went away from it like this is not us so I would imagine they liked what they saw from Van Pelt recently and how he kind of tweaked uh, added his stuff to the Browns offense I suppose and I, Ramondre Stevenson um, 
is a power runner for sure. He fits he fits that gap scheme, that man scheme, um, inside zone more than outside zone, but can play in that. Uh, so I, I would imagine what, what recently we saw from the Browns is what Van Pelt brings. That's a really good question, a really good uh, topic. I can only assume Stevenson and Henry are going to be a big part of the game plan. This is going to be timing offense. So what receivers fit that best uh, and what receiver – depth chart look like with the NFC. Yeah, good questions. Um, it's really up in the air. Bourne's, we're definitely going to see that. I think Bourne is the best bet to be their best receiver, but Juju's got that talent. Polk's the sure thing outside. Or do they add someone else? Um, really good questions. Uh, what week do, and this is from RJ, what week do you see May starting for the first time? Yes. Trying to answer that. It's tough. I think we'll see him. Um, uh, do we see him week one or do we see, I think most, my take for the most part was that they, I, for some reason want to say they actually plan on starting Brissett. I'm going to, I might change it here, but they, they might for the most, most of this process. And they, they, their plan was to start Brissett, get through that tough part of the schedule and then really plan on putting may in unless they're winning games like crazy. But Man, I think May is going to be better than expected right off the bat. Even though he's going to have his growing pains, he's going to throw. He's going to play hero ball. He's going to turn the ball over. But I think he's going to. They're going to get him in the, the training camp, like the actual like real practices when everyone's there, and they're going to see him in preseason. And they go, we we got one with this guy because I believe that's who he is. I believe he's that good, and and I feel that they're, they're going to think they're going to be competitive, and they can be uh, w- with him if they see that in the in the preseason process. And then they play him in week one. I, I'm gonna that I'm gonna tweak my prediction to that right now, but I've had firm predictions for the other quarterback um, situations: the Raiders, the Broncos. This one's not as firm, uh, but I do know I'm very excited about Drake May and the future of the Patriots. I think he is the answer. Um, he is a boomer bust type guy, so we'll have to wait and see. But I trust the the evaluation here, and I'm excited. I'm excited. A lot of pieces. Yeah, the more we talk in this video, the more. You know, I realize like they, they, there's a lot to get excited about. They have some high upside players. They really do. So, uh, let me know what uh, team you think I should do next. You see, they're listed. The only teams left are down here. My Vikings are still left. Uh, the Super Bowl champs, Chiefs are still left. Then two other playoff teams still left. So, uh, exciting stuff. A lot to get to. We'll do some trade videos, IUK video in the near future here. Uh, but that'll do it for this one. Check out our sponsor, Liquid IV. Code Golf for percentage off. Uh, tw- get involved with us on Twitter. Links in the comments for that as well. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.